getting started with TurboTax Business Incorporated. During this video, we will be looking at how to activate the software, creating a new T2 corporate tax return, carry forwarding an existing tax return from a prior year, using the form search feature, using the auditor, and printing and filing the return. You can purchase TurboTax Business Incorporated either online or in a retail store. If you purchase in a retail store, then you will purchase a box that will con contain a CD installation and the license key code. If you purchase online, you will receive an email that contains the download link and also the uh, installation key code. First, activating the license key code. Once your download and installation is complete, you're going to open up the software and this is what you're going to see. Starting your return, enter your TurboTax Business Incorporate installation key. So we click on this and here you can copy and paste, you can copy from the email and then paste it and then say OK. And here we are with the TurboTax Business Incorporated starting your return. You can, here you can create a new, open an existing, or carry forward a file. If you are using the most current version of the software, your activation look window will look as such. Um, the license key code from 2020 and on will be a 16-digit alphanumeric code. We are going to start with creating a new T2 tax return. In the software, let's create a new TurboTax Business Incorporated file. Click Create. And select your method of preparation is going to pop up. You can either select the easy step or the forms method. Let's go through the easy step first. Let's click next in order to go through the easy step. Each step will give you a little bit of information of what you need to complete. For example, um, corporate information. So you will need to enter the business number and legal name of corporation and then your fiscal year dates, and then it'll suggest to save. And then you can save your copy, and then you can continue with the questions. So you just float, you just need to float through the easy step and answer everything that's, that it requires, and then you continue like this and through the return. Once the basic information is, is filled out through the prepare tab, here you will find next and it'll get through the check method. So it's going to go through the check to let you know that there's maybe information missing or questions unanswered. So you can sign off or you can continue to next to go through the next questions that need to be answered. Just a quick note that some information and some questions are mandatory. So if you come across these T2 RSI red messages, this means that it must be completed. Next, you will come across these warning messages. Some warning messages can be signed off with the sign off button, or they need to be corrected, in which you must go back and correct. Next, you will see the notice messages. These can just be signed off. Once you are done with the check part of the easy step, you're going to come into finish. And here you just need to follow the instructions. For example, here it says my return contains errors. So I need to click the fix button in order to fix my errors. And then it brings me through the check again. And then I have to go through next. And then I have to fix my errors that I have not fixed or signed off. Choosing to use the forms method. So you click forms here. On the left hand side, you're going to see a list of items. If you click on the little plus sign, you will see that all forms that are going to be used in the identification, all the identification related forms that you will need to use. Federal, all these forms are federal forms. It doesn't mean that you're going to need them all, but they are here if you need to use them. Jiffy, this, these forms are what you are going to need to to add your Jiffy, so your Schedule 100 balance sheet, and your Schedule 125 income statement. Also there is Provincial, so all your Provincial forms will be located here. Alberta is a little individual, has the, its individual section, because you, you'll need to file an AT1 Alberta return if you live in Alberta. 
Under the filing section, it will give you a list of forms that you that you will use during the filing. Installments, this is if you need to pay installments to the, the Alberta or federal government. And here, client is just the summaries. Note that TurboTax Business Incorporated does not support the Quebec return, so you'll not find the province, any provincial forms here for Quebec. In the form search bar, you can also type the, the name of the form that you are looking for. As an example, let's go for Schedule 141, which is the Jiffy Note checklist. So you can answer these questions here if this is the form that you were looking for. You can also type in Schedule 3 in case you need to enter the dividends you received or you paid throughout the year. Let's look at how to carry forward a T2 tax return. In the Starting Your Return window, here we're going to click on Carry Forward a File. Here you're going to see Carry Forward a File, either Find File Yourself or Search for Files. I suggest to Find File Yourself because the default location will be in your local C, so we go in this PC, and then your local C drive, and then in Users, your name, in your Documents, or if you use a OneDrive, your OneDrive in Documents, then My Profile Data, then you're going to go scroll down to T2 Returns, and you're going to find your previous year files here. So then you click on the file, then once you click Open, the file will open in your software. So it, depending on what the tax year you're doing, right now we're doing in 20, 2020 to 2021 as an example. So all your previous year's information will be listed here. Using the form search feature. In TurboTax Business, we're going to go through the form search. We, we saw a little bit on the form search earlier, so we're going to go through it a little bit more. So used forms. Here you're going to see a list of all the forms that you've used in this tax return. So you can click on each form that's highlighted in blue in order to open the form. Identification. The identification is the info form where you've filled out all the basic information on the corporation. The RAC details, these are information that you're going to use to fill out for linked corporations and the summary of the RAC. In the Federal tab, you're going to see a list of all the Federal forms available in the software. It doesn't mean that you're going to use them, but they are there if you need them. The Jiffy. The Jiffy, these are the forms that you're going to use to fill out your assets, liabilities, also for your revenue and operating expenses. The checklist you may or may not use, but it's there if you need it. For Provincial, you're going to see that there is Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Yukon, and Ontario. Um, you will not find any CO17 Quebec returns as we do not support the Quebec portion of the corporation return. Um, Ontario, the Ontario return it goes through the Ontario business business registry now, so you'll just see the basic forms. You won't have the actual Ontario Ontario return. Um, also, you'll have Manitoba, New, New Brunswick, Northwest Te Territories, etc. Under Alberta, you have all the Alberta forms because if you are living in Alberta or your corporation is based out of Alberta, you will need to file an AT1 Alberta tax return. So you have a list of all the Alberta forms that if you that you may or may not need. Under the filing section, these are other forms that you may use for either non-resident, investments, um, shareholder information, um, worksheets, etc. Installments. These installments you're going to use if you're going to pay installments to the federal government or Alberta government. Or you can use the tax installments paid that you've already paid to these governments. And finally, client. The client gives you the summaries, so you can have the regular summary of the, the tax return or the five-year summary. Now you can also type in the form number that you're looking for. So if you're looking for Schedule 1, you type it in. You can hit either Enter or Go. So there's also Schedule 3, Schedule 
four, schedule six, etc. So you can just type them in and hit go or enter here. Let's say you're halfway through the easy step and then you realize, oh, I forgot something on another form. So you can just click on the forms button on the top here in the toolbar and then you can select your form that you're looking for. So whether you're in the auditor in file now, you can always go back to forms in order to fill out the form that you're looking for. A quick note that when you're in the tax return and you don't see the, the form search on the left hand side, you just need to activate the navigator. So you just click on the navigator button on the top in the toolbar and it'll, it'll activate your form search. Using the auditor. Once you have completed the tax return, you've gone through prepare and check and finish, um, you may find that you might still have errors. In order to c fix those errors, you have to open the auditor. Sometimes the auditor will not be open and it'll be grayed out. If it's grayed out, you're probably because you're in the easy step. So in order to activate the auditor, just click on forms, then on auditor, and then you'll have your list of messages here. So now you see I have a list of warnings, notice, override, even a T2 EDI e-file error. So if I want to make this bigger, I just drag it up a little. The T2 EDI e-file error is indicating that I have errors that I have not solved. On warnings, you can double click, and if you see that the field does not need correction, then you can go back on the message, you right click and select sign off. This will put a small red check mark in front of the message. Sometimes the warnings need to be corrected, so when you double click, you just fill out the data that needs to be done. Notices can also be signed off. They're just messages letting you know that you might want to double check something. Overrides can be signed off, but a lot of times they can prevent e-filing. So either double click and remove the override. So you right click, select override to remove the override, or you must find where the override is coming from. So the linked form is found by a right click. So info, and this is where it's coming from, or you can double click in the field. Once you have reviewed, fixed or signed off, on your auditor messages, you can go back to file now and continue filing your return. Finally, e-filing and printing the return. Let's start with e-filing. So once you've completed the return, gone through prepare, check and finish, you're going to see here it says confirm your filing choice. So you're going to select corporate internet filing and then you're going to hit next and then you're just going to follow the instructions. So it's going to show you the business information. So you're just going to click next. And then it's going to say you are ready to file to CRA. So you again you click next. Oops. And then you're going to see TurboTax Business Incorporated with the information. It says you will you you are going to use your one available license. So you're going to click OK. And then you're going to see the file has been built. So again you're going to click OK. And then it's going to bring you to the corporate internet filing web access code window. So if you want to request a web access code, from, you click here and the software will automatically generate a web access code for you. If you already if you already have one that was provided by CRA, then you're going to enter it here. Once you've selected everything and all the information is correct, you're going to click on the accept button and then your return is going to file to CRA. So now that your return has been e-filed and it's been accepted by CRA and you have jotted down your confirmation number, you're going to be ready to print your, your return. So here you're going to go to File, Print, and you're going to see three options. It says Print Copy for Review. This is the file copy for your records, Do not for submission. There's the print final copy. This is the government copy for submission. This is for paper filing only. So if you are not e-filing, this is the copy you would print to be able to mail to, to CRA. And then there's print a single form. This you can select forms within the T2 return. So if you just want to print the T2, then you would select just the T2. If you just want to print the summary, you would select just the summary and then you would hit print. In the print selection window, there's an options button. So here you can you can go directly to the print setup and choose what printer you're printing to. So you can either use PDF or you can use um, your, your paper printer. So an HP, Canon or whatever it is that you use. And then hit OK. 
We have now come to the end of our video. For further support, you can contact us on live chat by using the link you see here, or you can use the chat icon in, located in your software. You can also go online to the TurboTax Business Incorporated uh, community. Thank you for watching.